Welcome to my new video, a new chapter in the latest boom and bust cycle. What lays ahead is undoubtedly a rather sensitive chapter in the boom and bust cycle drama caused by US monetary policy. The US Federal Reserve is about to end its ultra easy course. The reason? After two years of exceptionally low interest rates, with most real, that is, inflation adjusted interest rates even in negative territory, and a huge inflow of newly created money to the economic and financial system, goods price inflation is rearing its ugly head. In November 2020, US consumer goods prices rose 6.8% compared to the previous year, the highest rate since 1982. In September, US housing price inflation was 19.5% year on year. What is more, from the end of 2019 to December 2021, the prices for agricultural goods rose 47% and for industrial metals by 44.5%. Most notably, the US stock market index gained around 58%. What will happen if and when the Fed begins its fight against inflation? by raising interest rates and reining in money supply growth. Looking at the Austrian business cycle theory will help answer this question. First of all, it makes us understand what the Fed's expansionary monetary policy has done to the economic and financial system. In early 2020, in response to the politically dictated lockdown, the Fed pushed interest rates to extremely low levels, starting monetizing debt and effectively put a safety net under the financial system. It promised investors to ward off any politically undesirable credit defaults. The Fed has increased the M2 money supply by around 40% since the end of 2019, largely by buying the government's newly issued bonds and paying for them with US dollar created out of thin air. The government in turn paid out the money to private households and firms resulting in an increase in M2. The extra money is now being used to purchase goods and services, not only consumer goods, but also assets such as stocks, real estates, bonds, housing, etc. The dramatic expansion of M2 explains much of the recent higher goods prices. The Fed's policy of artificially lowering interest rates has also contributed to driving up goods prices. In the case of stock prices, the reason is obvious. A decline in interest rates lowers firms' borrowing costs, translating into higher profits, which drive up stock prices. In addition, the Fed's suppression of the interest rates makes investors discount future profits at a lower rate, resulting in higher present values and thus, and thus higher stock prices. The same applies to housing. Most importantly, the Fed's artificial lowering of the interest rate has distorted the production and employment structure. It has led firms to increasingly invest in more time-consuming sectors, capital goods industries, at the expense of investing in less time-consuming sectors, consumer goods industries. As a result, employment has been diverted from the consumer goods industry and into the capital goods industry, while investors such as banks, insurance companies, pension funds, etc., have invested their money in the capital and less in the consumer goods industries. What happens if and when the Fed raises the interest rate? First of all, higher interest rates reduce credit and money supply growth and thus goods price inflation. Of course, even a slowdown in monetary expansion can trigger a sharp decline in asset prices such as stocks and housing prices. For investors may get rid of equity and real estate investments if they, expect, if they expect monetary tightening will deprive them of the hitherto generous support for rising asset prices. What is more, the rising interest rate causes consumers to restore their preferred consumption savings proportions. Savings increases at the expense of consumptions. Firms then realize that the demand for their products is below expectations. Their investments turn out to be unprofitable. Investing in plants and equipment comes to a shrieking halt. Jobs are cut. The capital goods industry is hit particularly hard. 
Rising interest rates reveal that firms have invested too much in capital goods and too little in consumer goods production. The ensuing recession depression, the bust is painful, is the painful adjustment process through which the economy corrects the misallocation of scarce resources caused by the inflation-driven boom. Prices in the capital goods sectors rose too sharply during the boom and must be allowed to fall during the bust so that capital goods prices, wages and the deployment of capital goods and labor in the production process realign output with actual demand. The Fed's plan to tighten policy would work towards the necessary adjustment process of the production and employment structure. And monetary policy tightening is needed. The strong increase in prices for goods and services across the board, a result of the lockdown policy, is now translating into a massive wave of inflation made possible by the enormous monetary overhang created by the Fed. This clearly shows that the policy of increasing the money supply and pushing interest rates to extremely low levels can go only so far. The public is becoming increasingly dissatisfied with higher inflation, which is putting pressure on monetary policy makers in Washington to take action. What is to be expected from the Fed? There are two possible basic scenarios. Number one, the Fed means business. It really wants to lower consumer goods price inflation back towards the 2% mark. Or number two, the Fed just wants to keep inflation from spiraling out of control, but it does not want to abandon the new regime of increased inflation. Scenario number one is not impossible, but it is relatively unlikely. Under the prevailing economic and political doctrine, the Fed is not meant to curb inflation at the expense of triggering another economic and financial crisis. Weighing the costs of a recession against the cost of higher inflation, the latter is considered the lesser evil, especially since many people have probably not lived through a period of high inflation and do not know much about the economic, social and political damage caused by persistent higher inflation. Scenario number two appears to be more likely. That means that the Fed would take its foot off the monetary policy accelerator a little by reducing its monthly bond purchases, that is reducing the rate of increasing the quantity of money and or raising interest rates. However, such tightening of policy would not be intended to cause a recession depression to rebalance the economy. It would only intend to keep inflation from spinning out of control and, at the same time, allow inflation to settle at a higher level, in the range of, say, 4 to 6 percent per year permanently. In scenario number two, the Fed would make the US economy enter a regime of elevated inflation. Doing, uh, doing so would most likely postpone the inevitable for a while, but it would not solve the underlying inflation problem. It would exacerbate the problems caused by inflation by resorting to even higher inflation. The truth is that inflation is a policy that cannot last. This is a central insight of the Austrian business cycle theory. Ludwig von Mises was well aware of the inflation problem and he warned against any such inflation policy. Quote, With regard to these endeavors, we must emphasize Three points. First, inflationary or expansionist policy must result in overconsumption on the one hand and in malinvestment on the other. It thus squanders capital and impairs the future state of one's satisfaction. Second, the inflationary process does not remove the necessity of adjusting production and reallocating resources. It merely postpones it and thereby makes it more troublesome. Third, inflation cannot be employed as a permanent policy because it must, when continued, finally result in a breakdown of the monetary system. Quote ends. Given recent price developments in financial markets, investors seem to be betting on something along the lines of scenario number two, which, if they read the near future correctly, 
must raise serious concerns about what is going to happen further down the road in terms of inflation and the economic, social and political destruction it will cause. Thank you very much for your attention. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and ring the bell.